Welcome to Tech Things. Here we have the PowerBook G4 that we were talking about, part one. Uh, obviously, it's in a little bit more of a fragile state at this moment. Um, problem is, I salvaged a DVD ROM drive, DVD writer actually, from work slot loading. It's the correct model. However, this one has an issue. Um, the mechanism has some sort of problem and it doesn't want to accept a disk. So, we're going to open it up and see if we can't make this happen. My unorganized bit set here will assist us. We're going to take a look, actually, have to remove these sides before I get too deep. For some reason, this is not retaining the bits, so this is going to be a little bit fiddly while I properly remove these screws. I did do this a bit at work today. I did a little bit of work on this in my spare time, my breaks. So I have a good idea of how it's supposed to come together. I think, and I did see a video about this on YouTube, I believe that there is a piece of the mechanism that is out of alignment. It's all a bit of a clockwork deal. Like it all goes in clockwork. It's all got a specific sort of rhythm that it goes through. All the gears and all that kind of stuff. Needlessly complicated, but it's so awesome when it works. I love slot load drives. I just think that they add so much more elegance to a product and obviously Apple does too because they've incorporated them ever since the slot loading iMac. And I guess Steve Jobs was probably directly responsible, for, if I remember correctly, it's been a while since I've done any specific reading on it, but I believe that he would probably be the person responsible. Common sense dictates, you see, this is what happens when you get cheap screwdrivers. I will be remedying this soon if I continue to do these videos, uh, because that's just retarded that it keeps happening. Um, but I would imagine that if anybody at Apple would be like, hey, slot loading drives are better. Tray loading drives are ugly and stupid. That would be Steve Jobs saying that. Of course, he probably said it way better than that. Anyway, I think part of the issue is that this drive is a little bit thicker. This piece here, it appears to be... This, this piece came off of the original CDRW drive. And I just think it, it clamps onto this really tightly. But this is the uh, offending piece of equipment. This little white part here is supposed to slide to the side and allow the disc to go in. It's supposed to, you can't see it I don't think, supposed to allow the, the uh, disc to slide in. This came in uh, the my CD that was in the previous video. I don't even know what's on it. It's a Sesame Street podcast disc apparently. But this particular white piece is on a little arm that slides and releases another piece in here to allow the disc to slide in and trigger the mechanism that brings the hub up to grab the disc and then start reading it. Um, that makes any sense. It will make sense here in a moment when I open up the drive. These are not quite like PS3 drives in that PS3 drives, if you open them wrong, hell, if you look at them wrong, they pop apart and the mechanism just kind of sp sprays everywhere and you have to kind of pick up the pieces and put them together in a specific way 
and almost actuate the drive manually to make it function. If you've ever worked on a PS3 disk drive, you know what I mean. Uh, it's fiddly, it's annoying, and frankly, it's all Sony. Because that's Sony. Fiddly and annoying. And speaking of which, that's the arm I'm talking about. There's this little plastic spindle that the disc rides on. So when this arm goes over, it releases this catch right here for this, and that allows the disc to then slide in. However, some for some reason, it does not want to go past this point. And I think that this motor here, I read in a, I saw in a YouTube video that this motor here is probably the source of my woes, and I don't the way it's looking is I'm going to have to remove this white piece here to gain access and I'm really trying to uh, there's all kinds of stuff in there I don't want to fool with I may just consider that a lost cause because I really don't want to have this part come off but this part has to come off before this part it looks like although it does look like those are not connected, but this slides into this. Yeah, I've been down this road before. It's just not very fun to have to find every little piece and part and put it all back together the way it was and then find out that you have to now do something special because the drive doesn't want to accept the disc. The funny thing was, it was working. It was working momentarily and it went back to its old tricks and I'm I thought momentarily that this piece here which goes right on like this and now obviously it slides right on was clamping down on this arm and causing it to get stuck but I don't think that's the case I think this drive has just gotten out of alignment and I don't think it's I'm just trying to look for pieces. Oh, and I think I've found it right here. Let me get out a flashlight here. Look, there's two teeth right there where my thumb is. They're stripped. I don't I can't tell if they are. Yeah, those are stripped. They're broken. So fuck that drive. I don't think that's going to, uh, I don't think this is going to be a, uh, I don't think it's going to be a contender. I think it's going to be uh, relegated to the scrap heap. So, the next step is to order a decent DVD drive off eBay, but we want to have some fun with this now. We want to get Leopard going on it. I'm backing up stuff off of the Power Mac hard drive now, the Power Mac SSD, and I'm going to use this. It is a trayload DVD drive. It is not a DVD RW, just a straight DVD drive. And we're going to use this to install Leopard. Clean install. This is going to be uh, just a temporary install, or a temporary, this is just going to be a temporary uh, dummy drive for now, because I've used it before, but I used it to install on the uh, original 40 gigabyte pay to drive, and that was uh, unbearably slow. Uh, that was it was almost completely useless. Um, and my goal is I've seen I I got a comment that said we should we should keep it on Tiger and I I, I don't think I want to do that. I want to max it out. Uh, if only for the fact that there's and I know that there aren't too many things you can do with a computer like this, especially with something like Leopard that slows down the computer. But there are certain things I would like to do that I don't think Tiger can do, and I'm not sure what they are right offhand. But I know there's something. So, and I just have this uh, innate need to upgrade everything to its fullest capacity, uh, be it OS or 
memory or hard drive or whatever. Hence why I'm using an SSD in a machine from 2002. Um, so, and I contemplated, because here is the modem, contemplated a couple things actually. Um, I contemplated leaving, contemplated leaving the modem out. But I think I'm going to keep it in because for a piece like this, a piece, it's a computer, it's not a museum piece. For something like this, I want to keep it original. If it was a daily driver, something that I was going to be using, I would probably remove the modem because one, it keeps, it's probably doesn't help with power consumption. Uh, having the modem on probably saps a bit of power and that would for especially when the battery is not at its fullest capacity, that's probably not something that uh, I really need if I want to use this out and about, which I do. Um, for what reason, I don't know. And if I was going to use it out and about, secondly, I probably would never have a need for it. I can't remember the last time I had to dial into anything with a modem of any sort. Uh, so, if it was going to be a daily driver, I wouldn't, I wouldn't remove this. But since it is such a nice computer, and since it is something of a uh, collector's item, I will probably keep it in there. I know it's not a collector's item per se, but it's a gorgeous machine. And it was probably Apple's most radical portable to date. It was something that uh, blew me away, and um, frankly, it blew a lot of people away. So uh, I'm going to uh, probably keep this as stock as possible, whilst making it as fast as possible. Um, I had another thought earlier about it, and now I can't remember for the life of me what I was going to say. So I'm sure I'll think of it while I go back up, go back up and get the SSD that is clearing off. Um, and I'll append that onto this part of the video. So this should be a one part OS install. Listen to me trying to map out these videos as I make them. Um, because I'm not yet sure what direction this channel is going to go. Um, but the next image you see will probably be of this PC, of this computer, derp, with this sandwiched underneath of it, installing a leopard, hopefully. So I'm going to go check on the status of the SSD and jump cut. Jump cut. So, I lied. A couple of things I've been kind of having on the back burner for this channel options for cameras, options for video. Mostly I'm looking for a camera I can hook up to a laptop via Firewire because I hate fussing about with tapes. I hate fooling with rewinding them and capturing tapes. I hate it. Um, I know people that do. Don't mind it. I could get used to it I guess but I really don't want to do that. Um, this is probably going to be the best bet. I'm waiting for a battery charger to come in the mail for this. Because these I obtained at thrifts. Um, this one I haven't even taken the tag off. $4.99. Um, pretty decent deal. It's an old uh, eight millimeter uh, DCR TRV8 NTSC. Oh no, I lied. Mini DV. Both of these are mini DV. Actually, I thought this was an eight millimeter. Uh, shows how much I pay attention. Uh, either way, better off anyway because. 8 millimeters, the way it gone the way of the dodo, and mini DB is still sticking around. To do have a DVC Pro deck as well, I could get an adapter for and use mini DB tapes in that if I really wanted to be fancy and circa 2006 or whatever. Um, this camera looks like it's a little bit. But Sony makes good products, I think. Um, these cameras are. They feel nice in the hand, they're well built. Um, and I think that eventually there'll be an asset, uh, one of them. This is actually, I'm recording this on a Sony DSC T110 Steady Shot. 
uh, cyber shot. Is it a cyber shot? Yeah, it is. It's Carl Zeiss lens. Um, seems to be doing okay. I'm just looking at the, the video as it's capturing and it's focusing okay. Um, previous videos were captured using my iPhone and I was unhappy with the quality, but it was also I was also not using a tripod. Um, this is actually being uh, <laughs> this is part of the tripod I'm using. I just leaned up against this glass table. Um, so some behind the scenes fun. This is a tripod I got at <laughs> surprise surprise the thrift. Um, but actually this was kind of cool because and I was excited to use it because it's an old gold crest. I'm acting as if I know anything about gold crest. No, I don't. But it came in this nice retro zip case and just looked really chic in 50s. 50s, 60s, I don't know what it was. Um, and it was at the, it was in the Goodwill bin, so I grabbed it and it was cheap, cheap, cheap. That's the name of the game and this stuff. I don't pick anything up like this. It's expensive. And a lot of the time I get lucky. So, back to the task at hand. The PowerBook G4 is quivering and ready to accept the uh, SSD here. This is the SSD I was talking about, the SanDisk. And this is it right here. That's all there is to it. This, this deal. Uh, it's a SATA, and here is the uh, PETA to SATA adapter, the 44 pin adapter. I had no, I didn't have to make any modifications. I am a little bit uh, annoyed at the quality though. You can see right here, here you can see that better where it's chipped. Because as I was wiggling it out, it was very tight when I first got it, and as I was wiggling it out, it loosened the piece right there at the corner. It doesn't affect anything, it still works fine, uh, but it's just an annoyance. Uh, because I just bought the damn thing and it's already broken. Um, we'll hook up our uh, Apple adapter here. Correctly uh, pinned and everything. And it just, I have the plastic sheet that went on the hard drive and it fits very nicely in here. Uh, it does kind of stick up a little bit because of the tension on this piece right here. I'm making sure we can see this. The tension on this piece tends to uh, pop this up some, so let's see if we can get in there to get some of the more naughty bits photographed properly. Um, as you can see, it does sort of pop up, but once the cover is on, and I really should probably cut the case down, snap it back inside so it doesn't contact metal pieces, but it's there's no real bits here for it to short out. Um, and it's not going to short out on the cover, I don't think. So I, and I haven't had a problem so far, so I'm gonna call it good for now. So let's get to work. With this, um, unfortunately, I don't have the drive currently that was in here. I don't have another slot load drive. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is put the display inverter back and just kind of have it to where I can use, use the laptop still. Flip it over and get to work on it. Um, the drive cable is lurking around here, right there, exactly where it was the whole time. Um, so the uh, name of the game here is to sort of have this floating. I hate these things. They're not terribly easy to... If, if it's not in the right position, you kind of have to feel around for it. There we go. Before you push down on it. So now we carefully 
flip the entire assembly over, make sure that nothing's binding, and away we go. We, uh, can't do much without power now, can we? I don't like the way that hinge sounds. I don't like how it's cracking as I... I wish there was a way to loosen that up. It's just popping. I don't think it's a huge problem. Now, before we go ahead and get started, I'm going to make sure that... I think the Leopard CD is... DVD, rather, is still in this drive. You can see it's up right out. Yep, that's the uh, obviously the Leopard DVD. So it will get confused here because I have decimated most of the OS on this drive. Okay. And momentarily should give us the option. Once the CD spins up, ooh, that goes down install DVD. And it has to think for a minute before it can actually let me do it. And now. Now. Okay. Wait for you. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> so this takes a minute or two. And I'll time condense it down, most likely. As it whizzes and buzzes and does all its loading. Cool little thing I found. A Pod 360 speaker. I think I picked this up for five dollars. Sounds pretty well like garbage when you uh, first start playing it. it. Has a little micro SD slot. And this is, I believe, a four gig card. It's not terribly robust. But the piece itself feels amazingly solid, which is why I bought it. Because I've never heard of Power Pod 360. But turning it on, it's got a built in battery, it's rechargeable. You can't really hear it right now, it's playing something, I can feel it. Sounds like garbage right here. But once you put it on this table, and I'm going to pause that because I want to get dinged on copyright if I play any more of that, you can hear the base picked way up. It uses whatever it's sitting on as a speaker, basically, for the uh, reverberation of lower frequencies. It does a really damn good job of it, too, depending on what it's on. Strangely enough, the frame of our sleigh bed is about the best sounding thing ever, which I'm not going to tape it to our bed to play music on. So I haven't really found a good place to use it yet. And I've not found a usage case for it yet. Maybe I'll put it on the trunk of the, my car when I'm working on it. Okay, we're going to format this drive. So, and please don't ask why that started playing Nickelback first off. I don't make a habit of listening to them, but I had a, uh, I, like I said in the last video, I was in high school in 2001. That song was part of the soundtrack to my high school education. Uh, that is a uh, part of a f various artists compilation I keep in my iTunes library called Best of Alternative, which lumps in a bunch of one-hit wonders and just kind of greatest hits of my high school years formatted out and that's 
the song it picked to play first, apparently. I'm not sure why. It's picked random songs every time I've turned it on. So let's get out of disk utility here. And we'll start the Leopard install in earnest. Options. I don't think I need to fool with this. I can do erase because I already did. Customize because I don't want some of this crap. I don't need language translations. I don't need additional fonts. I don't need printer drivers. So. No, I don't need to check the installation DVD consistency. I don't have much patience. And sometimes checking the consistency will fail it out falsely as this is a obviously a burned burned disc. This actually doesn't take too awful long to install. And what I will probably do because the optical drive was failing yesterday, I will probably just not put an optical drive back in it for the moment. And I will probably not use it until another optical drive comes in. Right now we're just installing Leopard. Um, so. And again, I've dropped a bit. So I'm going to jump cut this too because you'll need to sit here and watch Leopard install. Seventeen minutes. Fifteen minutes. It lies. Time left. About a minute. So it's got about five minutes left to sit here and grind. And this drive is spinning down. All right. We really get impatient. We can open up, open up the installer log and see what it's actually doing under the hood. I've always liked doing this. This only shows errors, but we can increase the detail level here. Finalizing disk for OS install. So it's basically just preparing the disk to boot. Running text cache. This to me is the interesting stuff. What it's doing at each stage of the operation here. You can see exactly what it's doing, which is cool. I mean, I think it's cool. Lots of little scripts. iLife, BK plugin move, remove client license. And it's doing these pretty quickly too. IFC start, update dilated shared cache, post install script finished, and now it's finished. People restart in 30 seconds. Physical memory allocation, whatever the hell that needs to. So, what we're gonna do? I guess it stops the countdown if you're clicked off the window, which is kind of handy. So it's ready to go. I think we we'll just say restart. What we're gonna do is when it goes to restart, we're just gonna power it off and unhook the CD drive altogether. Because we're done with it. That's all we needed. Alright. Nope. 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 Off with E. I think I hit power right exactly as it was restarting, so I, my five seconds are up. Alright. So, what we're going to do is 
carefully, disconnect the C drive, set it aside, make sure that the display in inverter is not contacting anything, and <clears throat> really hate how tight that hinge is. It really bothers me. I'm going to go ahead. This tripod is persnickety. I'm trying to get it straight on an angle. So, powered on. And this is the true first boot of this machine. Clean install on an SSD on a parallel, parallel, PETA to SATA interface. 120 gigabyte SanDisk SSD. And go. Clean install. Not harvested from a Power Mac G5. I had a, cle a previous install of Leopard that was five years old. I'm not expecting miracles. And boot times are never... I've never known an SSD to speed up a boot time. Like, magnif magnanimously. And that may not even be the correct word. But, it sure as heck speeds up application loading times, which is the goal here. And my camera battery is getting dangerously low. Okay, there we go. The unskippable demo video can't skip. Redundancy department checking in. Do -do. Do -do. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, 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 hello. I'm impatient. Ooh. Rack focus. There we go. All right. Continue in. Yes, I'm in the US. No, do not transfer information. Don't need any networking. No, I didn't want to do that. Read. Reading is important. Okay. Different networks. Uh, my computer is not connected to the internet. Not right now, anyway because I don't have my stick down here. Selecting time zone. Now this is a fun thing because you never get it right the first time and I don't know why they expect you to click around on here. But I always consider it a point of pride where I can do it the first time. Today is not that day. So much. There we go. Close enough. It is not 2008. I'll fix that mix. Enjoy your Apple computer! I will. Thank you. So, to sum up, Leopard installed on an SSD. See, it says Macintosh SSD. Um, and, as a bonus, one gigabyte of SD RAM. 10.5.6, so we don't have to do all that much updating. But let's uh, open up, yeah, mail, boom. Safari, three bounces, boom. I mean, the SSD is definitely doing its job. It's definitely speeding up application launching. Um, since there's no battery, I know that. Um, definitely worth the time and effort spent on getting it to work. iCat never opened before. Uh, and I'm not familiar with yet, yeah, five bounces, but the window is up and ready to go. Um, no beach balling. This is what I should have done in the first place. But I was lazy. iTunes is a big application. Three bounces, through two and a half bounces really, and it's ready to go. Asking me to sign my life away. Um, yeah, I'm going to call this a success, and Spotlight's even indexing. So, I really, really wish I could put an Airport Extreme card in this computer. I really do. Because that would make this perfect. I wouldn't have to have a stupid USB stick. But, tis what it is at this point. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead, 
and call this part successful. The next part is getting the DVD drive, slot load, putting it in there, and uh, we'll go from that point. But this is part the end of part two. Part two, that was three fingers, this is two fingers. Part two. Um, and this little guy really kind of saved the day twice because I was able to install Leopard. I'm going to take this off just in case I forget what's on here and toss this drive across the room. Um, thank you for watching Tech Things. Uh, we're continuing with the saga of the PowerBook G4. I'm going to go ahead and shut it down for now and set it aside. And, uh, to be continued.